she has trouble speaking to anyone at all. She was terribly shy, and if she met someone new, she could never think of anything to say. Today she will explain why communicating was so difficult and how she overcome her problem by learning the art of small talk. Marianne Bonner, what the heck I'm supposed to say? <laughs> what the heck I'm supposed to say? to a movie for which I was grateful because that meant I didn't have to talk for an hour and a half. <laughs> but inevitably the movie ended and I was stuck in my usual predicament. What the heck am I going to say? <coughs> I racked my brain again and couldn't think of anything. So I remained mostly silent. This scenario played itself out over and over again throughout my junior high and high school years. If a boy invited me to a dance or party. I worried for days or weeks in advance. What am I going to talk about? I had many conversations in my head, but the real ones just never measured up to the ones I imagined. One of my worst experiences was a prom I went to when I was a junior in high school. The boy was a family friend. And he was a senior at a different school. He was as shy as I was, and we sat there together for many, many long hours <laughs> in total silence. <laughs> it was so excruciating that the following year I made a point of missing my senior prom. I finally learned to make small talk when I was in college, and I did this mainly just by observing other people interact with each other. Now, I learned that most people like to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I could initiate a conversation by asking questions. Mm -hmm. And the questions could be mundane. They could be, what's your major? Or where are you from? I also discovered that I could keep the conversation going by sharing my own experience. If somebody complained about their difficult roommate, well, I could share my own story about that roommate from hell I had my freshman year. Another thing I learned was that small talk just doesn't always work. In spite of my best efforts, sometimes the communication just didn't happen. And I realized that sometimes people just don't connect. And the fact that the conversation wasn't working didn't mean it was my fault. Now, why did I have such difficulty talking to people when I was a teenager? Well, I think the main reason was that I just didn't understand the whole purpose of small talk. Now I thought that when I met somebody for the first time, I was supposed to say something provocative or witty. I thought if I said something that was less than scintillating, the other person would think that was boring. Well, it took me a long time to realize that small talk is called small talk for a reason. <laughs> it's supposed to be small. <laughs> it's simply a way for people to connect words aren't really that important. Another fallacy I had was that the other person was listening closely to everything I said and would remember every word. It took me a while to realize that people hear very little of what we said and remember even less. The ability to make small talk is the most valuable skill 
I learned in college, and much more useful than anything I ever learned from textbooks. It's a skill I've been able to use throughout my adult life. It's given me the confidence to talk to people I didn't know before and not have to sit there and worry, what the heck am I going to say? However, that's not to say that that shy 16-year-old has completely gone away. Once in a while, I'll find myself in a difficult situation like a cocktail party. And I hate cocktail parties, so please don't invite me to one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll feel like that 16-year-old again. But I tell myself that's okay. I am, after all, an introvert. I may never be the life of the party, but I've come a long way since I was 16. And if that shy 16-year-old is still lurking around there below the surface, she's no longer in charge of my life. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh.